What do you think of Wink's, Wink's nickname for you, Dirty 30? Uh, I feel like it was something I was earned. You know, I feel like I'm a, a relentless player, so it's, I feel like it's very fitting. Do, do, you agree, do you agree that you're kind of a gritty, grimy guy like that? Yeah, I grew up in an impoverished area, you know, so pretty much growing up in those type of terms, you know, you got to always have your guard up, you know, and put your best foot forward. And when things get rough, you just keep your head down and keep on working. So, as I said before, a very fitting name. Is it meaningful at all to you to be playing against your former head coach Thursday? It's just another game, you know. Uh, I'm excited to see him because, you know, he's the reason why I'm in this building. You know, salute to that guy, salute to Gettleman, salute to those who came before me. And at the end of the day, uh, it's another opponent, uh, another match, and we just decided to see where we at as uh, a team and as coaches. How do you carry what you've been doing in the summer into the preseason and then eventually the regular season? Uh, I feel like just staying the course, you know, uh, actually allowing things that you've been doing to be seen on the field, uh, allowing it to be translated and not being so caught up in the, the mental thing of the mental side of the game and just being free flowing and understanding that you put the work in and you prepare for anything you face once you hit that field. Are you excited by the way you have started camp personally? Uh, I just want to give a salute to those who put the work in for me in a manner of giving me insight, giving me wisdom. The OTAs played a major role for our uh, early success, you know, understanding the system, understanding the scheme and just the, the people who worked on my body before and once I got up here, my coaches, you know, my uh, my lady, my family, you know, they all played a mental role in my, my mental state now and just where I aim of being later on in life. What do you think when you're in a defense that the, the guy from the slot's going to blitz so much? Say that one more time. What do you think about the possibility of blitzing so much from, from your uh, position? I feel like that's a lot of opportunity. You know, early on in my rookie year, I was labeled as a guy who was blitzing, you know, so uh, a lot of people may have forgot that, but I didn't forget that. So I definitely have that uh, tool in the tool bag. So uh, as y'all know, we gonna unleash it. How did your mental state change? How, where, how are you different than you were last year ago? Uh, I'll say I'm a guy who's very open-minded, so I'm constantly evolving. You know, uh, I'm more in tune with things. You know, I'm, I'm in tune with understanding that <laughs> You're never going to be able to eliminate doubt. You're never going to be able to eliminate fear. You're never going to be able to eliminate the inevitable of losing reps. So having that understanding when I hit that field that it may not go my way and be able to respond, you know, so I feel like I'm more grounded and more free-flowing. How difficult was it to end last season with the injury and, and not be able to get on the field? Uh, it was a difficult thing to come to terms with, you know, laying up in a hospital bed and I was uh, say I was ruled out for six weeks, you know, and I feel like I was at a point where the uh, the, t the tie was turning into my favor. But at the end of the day, something that came and I just had to deal with it. And pretty much when that injury came, I had to reflect a lot and just be more of a, a student of the game, you know, learn from the other guys and just be locked in and understand more of the system that was being taught then, but just more of the game of football, you know, football one-on-one -on -one type of things. Being a student of the game, I mean, you were one of the early leaders in the clubhouse with interceptions and training camp and all mm -hmm. that. Is the way you're seeing it different at all? Is it kind of, you know, the way you're being a bit of a ball hawk? Yeah, I would say uh, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with Patrick Graham last year, and one thing he told me was being from the West Coast, you had that Cali cool, and I wasn't getting the line right when I got out of uh, the huddle, you know. So pretty much once you get a line, once the offense break the huddle, if you get a line, you're able to be more observant you were able to read what they put in right in front of you, you know. So that little tip right there has very uh, took my game to the next level for sure. That was a much needed thing that uh, he instilled in me for sure. What do you mean get a line? When you say get a line right away? Get set up, okay. you know. So when you break the a huddle, line. yeah, get a line. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, once they break the huddle, you know, go to where the pass drift is or where the case may be, wherever the call is, get a line so you can see the formation and see what, uh, what can happen, you know. He taught me that uh, the way you can play fast is by anticipating. Anticipating comes from film study and, as I said before, seeing what could come. Two more. You're a chess guy, right? Yeah. Played Kayvon yet? Nah, I haven't lined it up with Kayvon just yet.